In this, the first of many tutorial videos, we'll be introducing you to the basic concepts underlying the program, as well as some of the terminology we'll be using. First up, Rackspace. A Rackspace represents either a complete song or a portion of a song, and contains all the sounds you need to play that song or portion of a song. You can have as many rack spaces as you need to play a complete song or a complete set made up of different songs, and you can name each rack space anything you like. To begin, let's click on this initial rack space and give it a name. The gig rack has two sides, a front and a back. The front is where you will add widgets, such as knobs, sliders, switches, LED lights, which represent controls. The back is where you'll create the actual sounds you'll be using by connecting plugins together. We do this by using blocks, which can represent many things. For instance, you can have an audio input block, a plugin block, or a MIDI block, and so on. You'll notice as we begin that three blocks appear right away, by default. The first of these three blocks represents your audio input. If you look to the bottom left of your screen, you'll see the corresponding meter responding to my voice. The second block represents your audio output. The number of pins you see along the top corresponds to the number of channels in your current audio interface. The third block receives any MIDI coming into your system. Let's begin by right-clicking on the background to create a new block representing our first plugin. We'll go down to Native Instruments and select FM8. And there we have a new block representing the FM8 synthesizer by Native Instruments. Now, as these are still unconnected individual blocks, we have no way to bring MIDI in or hear the audio. To facilitate this, we'll connect our blocks using a simple click and drag motion. First thing we'll do is hook up our MIDI input, so now the FM8 can receive MIDI from anywhere. And next, we'll hook up a couple of audio channels. Now if I play my keyboard, we get this. And as audio output is produced, you can see the meter on the bottom right reacting to what we play. Now that we've created a basic sound, let's go back to the front and create our first smart panel. A smart panel is essentially the face of the rack space we're creating. We'll begin by going to modify in creating a two-unit panel. On the left, you see a list of all the widgets which are currently available. We simply click and drag, and we have a blue knob to work with. If I turn off Modify, you can see how I can now control the knob just by moving the mouse. Selecting a knob this way, while in Modify, allows us to configure its properties. The first thing we're going to do is set a parameter. We'll set the volume output for the FM8. The first thing we do is select our plugin, and having done that, there are several ways we can assign the volume. The first is to search through this list. A far easier approach is to use the Learn mode. If we click on Learn, the first thing that happens is your plugin opens up. Now we can go to Master and select the output volume. And you can see right away, as we move the slider, our knob now moves right along with it. The knob has now learned the volume parameter of the plugin. Now we just go back, turn off Learn, and turn off Modify. As you can also see, the knob has taken its name from the plugin by default. So now if I hold down a note and use the mouse to turn the volume knob that we've created, 
you can hear the sound getting lower or louder. In a future tutorial video, we'll show you how you can associate these knobs with the physical knobs on your controller. This will allow you to control your plug-in parameters directly from your keyboard or control surface. Until then, we hope this video tutorial was helpful, and we thank you for joining the Gig Performer family.